Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back. I know it's been a few days since the last installment. Um, sorry for the wait. I've just been um, I've just been busier than usual during really the whole course of this series. Usually, I try to upload every you know every day, every other day, but um, the last month or so, I've just had other stuff going on. So appreciate your patience. Um, as you can see, we have finished researching artillery. So first and foremost, let's pick our next research. Um, I think we were talking about doing the spider tron, right? So let's, we need to finish rocket control unit and then spider tron, and then let's get a rocket launched. Yeah, we'll be able to do rocket silo. Oh no, we need to do speed module three, prod module three, and then we can do rocket silos. Um, once that's done, I think we should do robot upgrades. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so uh, last time we built this wall, which is doing fine. Uh, we're feeding it light oil from coal liquefaction which uh, seems to be running just fine. And since then, I've put this wall over here on the southwest. Um, I was actually getting quite a few attacks that were coming up and around this body of water. Um, so at this point, the west and the south are pretty well covered from attacks. Um, now over here, rather than doing coal liquefaction, I decided to feed it instead with robots. Okay, so I just set up a unbarreling station here for light oil. Um, and then that goes into a tank. And then I have a requester chest that's requesting 10 light oil barrels at a time. And it's unloading into an active provider so that as soon as a barrel is emptied, it'll go into the active provider and immediately get moved back. And so this has been fairly effective. Um, I had to remove the dragon's teeth, as we're calling these. Um, originally, I had these extending all the way over to the water. But I had to remove them because the biters were continually attacking them down here, where they were out of range of the turrets. And, um, you know, they were just continually attacking these little bits of wall right here and damaging them and bots were coming out continuously and they were never dying. So I just removed them so that they come past. Actually, maybe what I could do is extend them a bit towards the wall. Yeah, let's just do that. That ought to be a good idea. Okay, and then to feed that, I have, oh, we can, I think we can delete those. To feed that up here, I placed a little barreling station. And uh, this'll, this'll make, this'll fill more barrels when we have less, I think less than 10 filled barrels in the system. Okay, so here we're just requesting empty barrels. And then, um, It'll put full barrels in the provider chest until we have at least 10. And then down here, um, the inserter that unloads the full barrels is connected to the tank. So I set that to only run if we have less than 1,000 oil inside the tank. So if we have more than 1,000, then we won't, we won't unbarrel anymore. And that's how we keep it just from running continuously. Almost done. You know what, we can speed that up a bit to get this patch mined out faster. Here, let's do this. There, now we got three drills instead of one. We'll get that finally taken care of. 
Okay, and then I also got my third and fourth iron li or copper lines going and added onto the bus. We could do the same with the iron, but there hasn't really been a need for more iron, so that's why I haven't done that yet. Um, so what I'd like to do now, since we have artillery researched, I would like to start to make some artillery turrets and artillery shells so that we can start to blast biter based better bases from a safe distance. So let us do that and then we'll start to incorporate artillery into the walls. Now there are there are a couple ways to do this. Um, you have artillery turrets and you also have now an artillery wagon that can be pulled by a train. So the advantage to an artillery wagon obviously is that it's mobile. Um, the disadvantage is that you need to have a rail network that will get it to everywhere you need it. So we could do this one of two ways. We could, we could either set up static artillery turrets um, around the edges of the base or we could just set up an artillery train and have that continually circulate around the base and it'll just blast things um, whenever they pop up. Now, personally, I think the artillery wagon is a better way to go because with just, with just one train of artillery wagons, you know, you can make say four artillery wagons and that could take care of your whole base rather than making dozens or even a hundred um, of the static artillery turrets. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, I had to pause and uh, I thought I unpaused and I've been talking for several minutes now <laughs> only to realize that I was still paused. So. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm not sure how much you missed, but um, I did get the artillery train built over here. I just added another train station above the one that I had previously. Um, so I've got one locomotive and four artillery wagons. And then each of those is fed by a requester chest, which is gonna be requesting artillery shells. So I'm in the process now of building artillery shells over here in the mall. Um, I moved this, these two belts full of iron ore up to the north, so I had a little more space to work with. Um, I noted that the artillery shell recipe takes four explosive cannon shells um, every 15 seconds. The explosive cannon shells take eight seconds each. So, um, so four of those coming from two machines will actually take 16 seconds, but that's close enough for me. Okay. Um, and then the cannon shells take steel plate, plastic bars, and explosives as well. So, um, we have the steel here on the in the mall already. So I'm getting that from the belts and then I'm going to get explosives and plastic bars using the bots because I'm making explosives down here and then we can put, well, we have plastic right here so we can actually, maybe we can belt that in. Would that be better? Yeah, let's do that. So let's see, this is coal going north. Now how can I do this? Okay, we can do that. That'll give us the steel. Let's get all this copper off of the belt. Okay, and then we 
can bring plastic in. And feed that onto the side there. I feel like I should be making more plastic than this. Yeah, I'm just running low on petroleum. Why am I not cracking it? Greater than 5,000. Oh, okay. So right now my light oil is getting prioritized to make solid fuel. Which is okay, because really I need to make sure that I have electricity before plastic. So this is going to slow us down a little bit. Um, let's see what we're doing here on fuel. Yeah, see, I'm already using a mixture of coal and solid fuel because I'm not making solid fuel quite fast enough. So, yeah, so I'm just going to leave it like this. That just means our factory is going to slow down a little bit. So be it. Okay, and then we need to request the explosives. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shift right click on the building and then shift left click on the requester chest. And what that's going to do is it's going to automatically populate the request based on what's needed for this assembly machine. Now this is also going to deliver this is going to deliver plastic, explosives and steel. Um, which I'm okay with because that's that's a convenient way for us to get extra plastic out of the logistics network. Because over time I do pick up some plastic bars and I very rarely need them for any hand crafting. So this will provide us with a way to get that stuff out of storage and, and send it somewhere where it can be used. Okay, and then here we need radar. So let's have a machine up here making radar. Uh, does this need steel? No. Alright, so I'm just going to do that. And that needs iron plates, gears, and green circuits. Just like most of everything else in the game. Oh, a tree. Wow. Don't run into too many trees anymore. Oh, and gears. Man, I haven't taken care of these gears in a long time. Okay, there's some gears. There's some more gears. All right, and then I'll bring in iron plate here, and I'll bring in circuits right here. Actually, let's do this because sometimes I want radar. So we'll put some into the network and we'll just set it to, I don't know, 10, 10 radar at a time would be more than enough, I think. And then we'll feed this what it needs. Okay, and then we have to request explosives. eight at a time. Oh, and we need an output chest, don't we? And 
and uh, you know what? I'm not even going to put a limit on this. These uh, these shells have a stack size of one, so a whole chest only holds 48. So I'm not going to bother limiting the chest. I'll just let it fill up. Okay, now it's going to take a long time to make enough artillery shells to fill up my artillery train. But as soon as that first shell is delivered, I expect that the artillery is going to start to go into action. So let's come over here and wait and see what happens. Because it'll immediately start to shoot any, any biter nests that are within range. Okay, it looks like there's none in range just yet. So that's good, that gives me time to explain. So if we go to turret coverage, now you can see uh, this red, this big red circle shows the range of the, of the artillery uh, wagon. Okay, and this is the automatic range. So as the train moves around, this, this range will go along with it. And wherever it stops, if there's any enemy nest or worm within that range, it'll start to fire on it automatically. When the train stops, it won't work while the train is moving. But as soon as it stops at a station, it'll start to fire if there's anything within that range. So what you can do is you can just set your train to patrol around your rail network and make stops at strategically chosen locations. And... Oh, I lost my radar over there. That's not good. Um, and as soon as it stops somewhere where there's a nest in range, it'll shoot it and destroy it. Um, and then it'll go on its way. And then the next time it stops there, there very likely won't be anything within range anymore. So it'll just, it'll stop and do nothing. Um, but the biter nest, you know, the biters expand. So eventually they'll, they'll try to establish a new nest within range and it'll get blasted again. And there's research that you can do to expand the range. Now, one thing you have to be careful of is that when you do fire on something, um, any biters that are within that nest will immediately come and attack. So you have to make sure that you're prepared to take a large attack whenever you attack with your artillery. Okay. Um, so we've got, we've got some ammo loaded here. Now the other, that's the automatic mode. Now the other thing you can do is you can craft one of these targeting remotes. Okay. And then I usually just put this in my hot bar somewhere. And with the targeting remote, if you go to map view, you can see that the range is drastically increased. Okay, now with the targeting remote, you can select specific targets. You know, you can manually target and the artillery will fire. So let's just see how that works. So let's say I want to take out this nest. So this shows me the range, the circle that you see here, this is the range of the explosion. So what I try to do when I'm manually targeting is I try to get, I try to get a spot to where I can take out multiple entities uh, with a single shot. So let's try an example. I'm just going to click here. I'll get out of map view so we can see the turret working. Boom, that fires. And then you can actually see the projectile go across the screen. Boom, there, and I took out three at once. So um, the automatic mode won't make any effort to do that. It'll just, it'll fire one shell for every single thing that it sees. So every worm, every biter nest will get its own, its own shell fired on it. Now that number that you see, like that three, that, that just tells you how many turrets you have that are in range that have ammunition that can fire on a particular target. So you'll see if I move outside of the range, it changes to zero. Right here close to the edge, you can see it changes a little bit depending on how many turrets I'm picking up. So right now it shows a three rather than a four, and that's because this one doesn't have any ammunition anymore. 
so I only have three turrets I can actually fire. So we got a nest over here. Let's go boom, boom, and see if that takes them all out. Nice. All right, and then these guys are all, yeah, they're going to attack. Now, what are they going to attack? I don't know. I see them moving south, and it looks like now they're going to go for my little radar outpost here, perhaps. I don't know. They're going to attack somewhere, and I don't have a lot of defenses up here, so that's not going to be very good for me. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to boogie over to where they're going so that I can uh, provide some support. And I can see him coming now. So let's get, uh, let's set up some laser turrets and hope that that's where they're gonna show up. Where did they go? Oh, there they are, okay. Let me grab their attention so I can lead them over to where my laser turrets are. Okay. And that's dealt with. <laughs> Look at this. This guy's been around for a long time. Still got yellow ammo in it. Hero. Okay. Uh, have I got any more ammo? I think I have. I've got two more shells. So let's see what other damage we can do here. Uh, I don't really care about those guys too much because there's nothing close by. So let's go. Um, let's go down here and see if we can take out that base that's over there giving my oil setup problems. And actually let's see let's see how we're doing with the rest of the ammunition. We're waiting for components. Yeah, I think we're out of explosives now. Cuz I don't have enough petroleum. Sulfur yeah, I got no petroleum. That's my problem right now. And that's because I don't have any crude oil. Probably because the biters destroyed it. Okay. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to... Well, yeah, let's take. we'll take the train over there, and then I'll go and fix it. Make sure I get in. It's more fun. Now you notice that this train is going very slowly and that is because the artillery wagons are a lot heavier than a cargo wagon. Uh, does it say? Yeah. So you see vehicle weight is 4,000 versus 1,000 for a regular cargo wagon or 1,000 for a fluid wagon. So one of these artillery wagons weighs the same as four cargo wagons. Okay, so automatic mode is going to engage. We're only going to get two shots fired off. Oh no, it didn't. It didn't fire anything. Okay, good. That means I can be more efficient. Uh, yeah, so let's take out this one. Can I get it with two shots? It's going to be tough. I don't think I can do it with only two shots. We'll try. We'll put one there, and I'll put one right there. Oh, I have three. Nice. Um, we going to shoot? Okay, let's put it in manual mode. There we go. Now it's going to shoot. Ah, uh, no, 
I'm not gonna get them all. Still one left. But still, that'll help. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and send this back. We'll send it to artillery load. Um, yeah, normally what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna tell it to go there and wait for five seconds of inactivity. Um, so what it would normally do is it would go there, it would wait until the loading stops and then it'll go back on its circuit around the base again. Uh oh. Good thing I got some shields. You know what I should do? I should make some personal laser defense. Okay, I'll have to go get some more goodies, but I think I'll do that. And put that in my armor. I'll have to take out something else, but maybe one or two shields. I could get Roboport Mark II, so that would help a lot too. Alright, uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, let's just run down and fix the oil. Reload my magazine. The worms are there. I don't really care about leaving worms behind, because they can't do anything unless I get close to them. There's just not enough oil here to keep to keep my base fed anymore. Um, so one thing we could do here is we could put speed modules in these things. It will cause them to consume more power, but it'll also it'll also give us more output. All right, so let's go back to base and see if we got some speed modules that we can grab. Oh man. I need to finish building the walls. Okay, we're doing all right here. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's do personal laser defense. I can make one of them without too much trouble. If I grab some low density structures, I grab a few blue circuits. There we go. And I'll get rid of one of my energy shields. take a minute to craft. Uh, yeah, speed modules. Let's see. Do I have any? Yes, I have 18 of them. That'll be just fine. Let's go put those in the pump jacks. We can put in two each, 20% each module, so that'll give us a 40% boost in output from each of these pump jacks, which is fairly significant. And that looks like I got just enough. 
Okay. Alright, so let's go to the production tab, click on fluids. Let's look at the last minute. And if we look at crude oil, there, we can see that our output has gone from around 6,000 to around 9,000. So, 40% higher, just by putting in a few speed modules. Now that's still, that might still not be enough. Um, we'll go over to the refinery and we'll take a look. If it's not enough, then we'll have to build another train and start bringing in oil from outside the main base. Which is not too difficult. Okay, how are we doing now? Well, we got a lot more plastic flowing. Uh, but we're still only running a portion of the refineries, so it's not quite enough crude oil to keep everything going. Let's see if we have any oil anywhere else in the vicinity. Hmm. Okay, there's a little bit up there. But that's not very much, actually. There's some over there. And there's some down there. Okay. So, we don't have a lot of good options for oil. We do have a big coal patch, though. So, we could always just set up another massive... We could set up a massive coal liquefaction uh, operation over here and just convert everything into petroleum and bring petroleum over to the base from the train. I think that would be fun to do. Do I have any other coal patches close by? No. Well, there's a little one there. And this little one here. I need to upgrade those inserters. Now I've got one... Yeah, so far I've only mined out on one of these drills. So it looks like this patch is going to last us a while. Um, let's see how much coal we're consuming. Per hour, let's say. Alright, so we're consuming 680 coal per minute. This patch has 1.7 million. So 1.7 million divided by 680. That's 2,500 minutes worth of coal. Uh, divided by 60. Okay, so we can run, at the present rate of consumption, we can run the base for about another 40 hours on that coal patch. I think, I think that's okay. So, what we can do for our oil problem is we'll just set up a massive, well, I don't, maybe not massive, but we'll set up a big coal liquefaction operation over here on this coal patch. Uh, we'll convert it to petroleum, and then we'll just pump in petroleum to the base. And then we'll use this to take care of our need for, mostly for uh, lubricant and light oil for solid fuel and um, we'll feed the rest of the machines with petroleum from the external base um, and while I'm waiting to get started on that hopefully our spider trine will get going okay now we are really not bringing in copper fast enough so I think it's time let's see I think it's time for a second train because we can see that this is these chests are completely full meanwhile our train is dinking around over here so we can add a second train full of copper or a second train for copper and that will speed things up considerably so let's do that now when we add a second train uh, we have some 
potential traffic issues that we need to think about. All right, so I'm going to put the train there. All right, and then rather have rather than having one train visit both of those stations, I'll have I'll have each train dedicated. So we'll send this one to Copper 2 until it's full. And then it'll come to Copper Unload until it's empty. Okay, and we'll send it on its way. Now, the potential issue that we have here is that when a copper train comes back and is in this station, if the other copper train comes back at the same time, it's going to come down here and it's going to sit there and wait. And while it's doing that, it's going to be blocking the iron train or the coal train from, unlo bleh, from unloading and maybe even the stone train, depending on how far it extends. So uh, we need to have, essentially we need to have a waiting area for the trains so that if, a, if the second copper train comes in, it has some place to wait where it's going to be out of the way. Okay. And we can accomplish that fairly easy by building something that's called a stacker. So what I'm going to do is up here at the top, uh, I'm actually going to come off to the side. Let's clear away some of these trees. And we'll set up, we'll set up three or four lanes um, for trains to wait. And the way that we do that is we're going to put we're going to put a chain signal right here do we want it right there yeah right there is fine and then we'll put a hmm let me think about this here i haven't done this for a while no I'm going to put chain signal at the front and then a regular signal at the back. Okay, and it needs to be 1 plus 4, so this needs to be a little bit longer. One, two, three, four. Okay, so right about there, I think, is the correct length. Yeah, so that's big enough to hold. Hold the train. Um, I should have placed this farther back. Okay, well we can do it. We'll do it this way. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to build multiple lanes. We'll set it up so that we can accommodate four waiting trains. Okay, and we need to take that out. I need some cliff explosives. I know that I have some in inventory. So let me get back in the logistics network so I can get those from the bots. So what will happen here is rather than coming straight down the pipe here, we'll have the trains divert into this, into this stacker where it'll come up here. It'll, it'll hit the chain signal. And the chain signal will only allow it to go through if the station that it wants to go to is clear. In other words, if there's a green signal right there. 
then it'll be able to go through and go down and go in, into its station. Um, a blue chain signal means that there are some paths that are clear and there are some paths that are not clear. Okay. <clears throat> so it's like a combination of red and green. So for example, if a train came here and it wanted to go to the artillery station, it would stop and it would wait there for this train to leave. But if it wanted to go to the, to this station, then it would be allowed to pass through and go to it. Okay, and I haven't gotten my explosives yet. My cliff explosives. Here it comes. I know I had, oh no, those were blue science packs. I know I've got some because I saw it in the inventory. Yeah, here we go. Okay, I got 17 of them. of these back like that just copy that a few times one there and one there all right and I'll actually relocate <coughs> pardon me relocate these signals so that they're as far back as they can go okay and then I am going to cut this. All right, so now the trains will be forced to go through the stacker. What's happening? I lost something down there. Ah, I lost a bot. That happens with these walls that are maintained by bots. Occasionally the bots will go into fire and burn up or sometimes they'll go to repair something while there are still biters around and they'll get destroyed. So it's just, that's just how it goes. Okay. So now the only way that the trains will be able to get back to the station is to pass through the stacker. As you can see, that one passed right through because there was nothing in the way. Now let's see what happens when there is something in the way. So I'll just make a single cargo wagon. just so you can see, and I'll put it there. So now the copper station is occupied. Okay, so here comes the copper train from copper two. And if I set everything up correctly, it'll go into the stacker and it'll have to stop and wait. Okay, so now it's just gonna wait there. But because I have three other lanes, any other train that wants to come back will be able to go down one of these other lanes and either wait for its station to be clear or continue to pass through and go to its own station. Okay, and now when I pick up this cargo wagon, that makes the station clear and the waiting train will proceed to where it wants to go. And this is how you can have multiple trains all feeding a common unloading station. Um, or have multiple trains. Um, for example, if we had one really big copper mine, we could have multiple trains all going to the same copper mine. We would just put, we would just need to put a stacker before the copper mine itself so that the trains have a place to wait. Okay. So I think that's going to about do it for this episode. Um, in the next episode, we can work on coal liquefaction. In the meantime, um, as I get some extra time, I will continue to build walls. 
so that we can stop these annoying biter attacks. Um, but yeah, I think until we get more petroleum, we're not going to have any more ammo for artillery. So, um, so we'll do the coal liquefaction next time to get more petroleum coming in. Until then, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you soon.